people, white 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 people. Another contemporary economic myth is that women make 75 cents for every dollar men make because they're discriminated against in labor markets. Like other myths, this does have a kernel of truth to it. So for example, if you add up all the incomes of women and divide by the number of women in the labor force, and then do the same thing for men, what you'll find is on average women do make about 75 percent of what men do. What's happening here is not discrimination in the labor market, but differences in the choices that men and women make about investing in their knowledge, their education, their skills, and their job experience that lead to them getting paid different salaries. Economists talk about people's human capital, and by human capital, we mean the knowledge, the skills, the education, and the job experience that people have. And economics argues that people get paid wages according to that human capital. It turns out that men and women invest very differently in their human capital. And we can see that in four different ways. First of all, educational choices. Men, for example, tend to go into fields like engineering. Women tend to go into social sciences, into psychology, into nursing. And so where men are making higher salaries as engineers or perhaps in the business world, women tend to end up in jobs for which their salaries are somewhat lower. So even though they may have the same years of schooling, the different choices they've made about their majors lead to them working in different areas and getting paid differently. Another difference between men and women is full versus part-time work. Women are much more likely than men to work part-time, men are more likely to work full-time. And part-time work, even for the same kinds of jobs, tends to pay less than full-time work. And women tend to prefer part-time work more than men because women still tend to take on the majority of the responsibility for children in the home. Finally, men and women differ in terms of their tenure on a job or the way in which their careers get interrupted. If it's the case that women take time off from the workforce to raise children, that will have an impact on their salaries down the road. So when we put these four things together, what we get is that the difference between men and women's pay is not a result of labor market discrimination, but of the choices that men and women make before they enter the labor market, or even when they're in the labor market, about the kinds of jobs they want to have and the way they want to balance of family and work. Studies that have tried to control for all these factors have shown that if you take a man and a woman, same experience, same education, same job, and compare their salaries, what you find is that women make about 98% of what men do. So that gender wage gap pretty much disappears. And in some jobs, women actually make more. The claim that women earn less than men for the same work is false. In the State of the Union, President Obama said that American women are being cheated out of about a quarter of their salary, that they earn only 77 cents for every dollar a man earns. This is a massively discredited factoid. It is simply not true. The 23 cent gender pay gap is simply the difference between the average earnings of all men and women working full time. It does not take into account differences in occupation, job tenure, hours worked per week. When all of these factors are taken into consideration, the gap narrows to the point of vanishing. The wage gap myth has been repeatedly discredited, but it will not die. The gender gap can largely be explained by men and women's different life choices. I mean, just consider how men and women differ in what they choose to major in in college. If you look at the top 10 most lucrative majors, fields like petroleum engineering or computer science, naval architecture, men prevail by large numbers. Women prevail in all but one of the top 10 least lucrative majors, such as early childhood education, social work. It turns out that the choice of college major and factors such as that help explain the gender wage gap. All the evidence suggests that though young women have the talent for engineering and computer science, their interests tend to lie elsewhere. 
And to say that these women are helplessly enthralled to sexist stereotypes or are manipulated into their life choices by forces outside their control, that's just divorced from reality. And it's insulting as well. I mean, if a woman wants to be a teacher rather than a minor, or a veterinarian rather than a petroleum engineer, more power to her. The White House should stop using the spurious wage gap statistic. Women are going to be best served by good information, accurate data, not hyperbole and misinformation. Well, you're right. I'm going to quote you again. Among the many factors which influence male-female economic differences, the most elusive is employer discrimination. Yes, that, that when you correct for all the various factors, such as the number of hours worked, uh, the continuous employment versus taking, time, taking a few years out to have, have children and so on, you take all that into account, mm -hmm. the differences between men and women uh, become quite trivial. If you look at the academic world, or as far back as 1969, Women who were never married and who had, uh, earned higher incomes than men who had never married. They became a tenured professor at a higher rate than men who had never married. Uh, and then later on, if you look at the general population, if you take the women who are past the childbearing years and who worked continuously, their incomes were higher than men. Their incomes were higher than men. Their incomes were higher than men. Their incomes were higher than men who would work continuously and so on. So the difference is, is that, not that the employer is paying them differently, but that they have different characteristics. So